Fire crews on the ground work quickly with the help of water dropping helicopters to keep a Chula Vista brush fire from burning out of control. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Chiquetto. And I'm Marcella Lee and tonight for Barbara Lee Edwards. The fire started at about 1230 this afternoon across open terrain near Heritage Road and Olympic Parkway. News that's Amanda Shotsky is live tonight with this brush fire alert. Amanda. Marcella and Carlo right now we are on Heritage Road and Santa Victoria Road where you can see the flames burnt the hillside behind us and just until moments ago we actually saw crews on the ground putting out hot spots. The good news is the fire is out tonight. That's thanks in part to the quick action of crews not only on the ground but in the air as well. This vegetation fire was first reported around 1230 this afternoon in the 1800 block of Maxwell Road. It started somehow in the small shrubs and grassy hillside near Heritage Road and Olympic Parkway. Now that's just west of the county landfill. It's also across the street from several residential communities. But fire officials say no homes were ever threatened. With that said, the wind played a big factor in fueling this blaze, moving the flames and burning around 10 acres rather quickly. People who live in the area say they were concerned to see those large plumes of smoke and the flames creeping down the hillside. For some folks, it might be it's close to the home, but when you see two helicopters coming over dropping water, I, I think we'll be OK. And Heritage Road was shut down at Olympic because of that heavy smoke, which made visibility very difficult at times. Now back out here live again. The good news here is that the fire is out. No structures were damaged and no one was injured in this uh, about the cause of the fire, though. That remains under investigation tonight. Back to you. All right, Amanda, thanks. Some people who live in Bankers Hill say they complained for over a year about an Airbnb party house. And finally tonight, there's a resolution. The San Diego City Attorney took action to shut down the short-term vacation rental. The court complaint lists more than 20 violations against the homeowner. News 8's Heather Hope has reaction from neighbors. Yes, neighbors have complained of loud music throughout the night, large gatherings of people despite COVID-19 health restrictions. Residents say they are relieved the city finally took action. It's very much an outdoor party venue house. Raising concerns for months, Pam Adler, a Bankers Hill resident of seven years, says gatherings at this short-term rental home at 2nd and Quint Street got out of hand. The parties have been large and noisy. And once the COVID-19 public health orders came down, Atler says the parties in a pandemic went up. We even expressed our concerns to the police that they were having to come out and break up these parties, which were full of non-masked people who weren't socially distancing. After a San Diego police and code enforcement investigation for over a year, the city attorney filed a civil enforcement action to shut down the rental, citing multiple violations against the property owners David Contreras Curiel and Alexander Mendez. Officials say avoided inspections and even had a COVID infected tenant. So this is one of those very egregious cases where we had to get involved. City Attorney Mara Elliott's complaint goes all the way back to December 2018, as the property was listed as the Ashley, your private oasis next to downtown. A statement from Airbnb says in part, Airbnb policy expressly prohibits party houses, and we have suspended the listing as we investigate further. Alongside the party house ban, Airbnb announced a 24-7 neighborhood support hotline where neighbors can call us anytime. We complain to the property manager, he would often quote rules to us. The property owners could face steep fines up to $1 million, but it is a process. This will take a little bit of time because the courts right now are struggling to stay open, as we know. However, we are pushing for an injunction to close this home immediately. Shutting down not just because of noise violations, but Elliot says owners have been operating as a business with ticketed events, but aren't paying the business tax. We were very shocked to read about all those charges. And there's more. Citing at least 20 violations of state and local laws, Elliot says the property had been illegally modified numerous times. This property owner had installed a pool, um, some extra bedrooms without going through the permitting processes. Elliot says in the future, the city needs clear short-term vacation rental rules. It could take us months and months to get relief from the courts. What we really need are reasonable regulations for short-term rentals. Heather Hope, News 8.
The number of COVID-19 deaths in California now tops 10,000, making it the state with the third highest number of deaths behind New York and New Jersey. Today, San Diego County is reporting 652 newly confirmed cases of COVID-19 out of more than 11,500 tests. That's a positive rate of 5.7%, which is above the 14-day rolling average of 4.9%. The total number of cases now stands at 31,779, more than 25,000 people have recovered. Three additional deaths were reported today, bringing the death toll to 586. Well, the U.S. economy added more jobs than expected last month, according to numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. But even with 1.8 million jobs added last month, the coronavirus pandemic continues to take a toll on the slowly recovering job market. I think that we are continuing to see job growth that is the good news the not so good news is that because of the spread of the virus in the south and the west and maybe now in the midwest the pace of job growth is slowing down some while the unemployment rate dropped to 10.2 percent in july from 11.1 percent in june millions of americans are still struggling Economists say the pace of recovery depends on whether the nation can effectively contain the virus and limit new surges in the fall. And we see it all around us, people out of work. Experts say the ongoing crisis could change our economy like never before. News 8's Monique Griego spoke with a local worker and county officials about the hardships and how they're trying to change things. We talked to a fitness instructor here at the La Jolla Sports Club who was very, very happy when they reopened, but then they shut down again. And now she has to find new ways to make money. As the coronavirus pandemic continues, so does the economic impact. It was really, really safe and everybody felt very comfortable, but of course they closed it all down. Deb Kazi is a fitness instructor at the La Jolla Sports Club, or she was before the pandemic hit and gyms were shut down. I lose my work, I lose my income. Um, I lose, you know, my ways to make means to an end. I have no money and it's really challenging. With so many people out of work in the restaurant industry, beauty industry and fitness areas, the county had to come up with new ways to help. We will get through this and the county is trying to be as creative and flexible and innovative as possible. County Supervisor Diane Jacob says the board recently allowing businesses to operate outside was a big step in the right direction. I think this will be a really big deal. Uh, for the individuals and also for the businesses. Really great. It's in the grass, open air. People are loving it. We're all spaced out. We have a lot of room and it's helping, but it's just not the same as being in a studio with all the weights and the equipment and music. And that's what people are used to. Still, the coronavirus continues to transform the way people make money. Experts say it's evident some, including folks like Kazi, may have to find new ways of sustaining themselves, possibly joining a new industry. Despite the extra effort, Kazi says it's worth it. It's a lot to lose. I mean, fitness keeps people sane and, and happy, and it's, a, I think, an essential part of everyday life, but they've closed them down and people are suffering. And if you do plan on operating outside, the county says it's always important to call ahead and make sure that you reserve a spot so that you know you have something that's definite and you can hold a class. Monique Riego, News 8. All right, Monique, thanks. Paying rent continues to be a heavy burden for many San Diegans, and time is running out to get help through a city rental assistance program. If you want to apply, you should act right now because the deadline to apply for the COVID-19 emergency rental assistance program is tonight. The program offers up to $4,000 to be paid directly to landlords to help with back rent and future rent. If you'd like to apply, just go to cbs8.com and click on the help button. The elderly community has faced the many impacts of COVID-19 head on as the most vulnerable and isolated population. But now a grant from the San Diego Foundation is providing seniors with many of the things they need to stay safe during these times without leaving their homes. News 8's Teresa Sardina has more. We spoke to the elder help team and they tell us through the pandemic there has been an increase in service requests and that grant they received is $100,000. And we find out how those funds are helping seniors.
Volunteers provide seniors with the support they need to shelter in place through the COVID-19 pandemic. From grocery shopping to taking clients to medical appointments, a client like Nancy can't drive to the store. I want to give you a million billion thanks for sending Jed my way as a shopper. Um, it was just extraordinary kindness and and he went shopping for me and I was able to send him to Trader Joe's where they had to wait for more than an hour outside the store before they even got in. A $100,000 grant from the San Diego Foundation COVID-19 Community Response Fund with support from sdg &E is helping the nonprofit's elder help. That grant is primarily being used for the actual purchase of the groceries and the time and the mileage that we reimburse all of our staff for all the deliveries and volunteers and um, most of it's going to supplies and purchases. Deb Martin of Elder Help says the grant will also address isolation, depression and ease financial concerns. Ann Clifford has been an Elder Help volunteer for over 25 years, serving as a volunteer driver. Recent months I've taken on uh, grocery shopping for one client, so I shop for her every two weeks and she's a joy. Prior to the pandemic would take them to more leisurely appointments, hair appointments, to the gym. Martin says Elder Help serves over 1,000 seniors in the county. They're making over 500 deliveries each week from groceries to household items. She says seniors remain the most vulnerable and isolated population. Through the pandemic, serving those living independently in their home has never been more critical. If you would like to donate to Elder Help or volunteer, we'll have that information at CBS8.com. Marcella and Carlo. Thanks, Teresa. If you'd like to donate to the Community Response Fund, just go to sdfoundation.org slash COVID-19, or you can just use the News 8 app. A local high school is suing Governor Newsom in hopes of reopening for in-person learning this fall. St. Augustine High School and the families of seven students have filed a lawsuit against the governor. Representatives for the school say they already know how to protect students and staff. This summer, there were more than 400 students on campus for classes and athletic programs with no reports, they say, of coronavirus cases. Using the most exacting protocols, we had no COVID cases on campus, and there's every reason to think that we could execute that again in the fall. The school hopes to reopen for in-person learning on August 25th. A coach for the Oakland A's apologizes after making an apparent racist gesture after the game. That story coming up. Plus, a wild police pursuit that lasted more than two hours up in the L.A. area. Temperatures this evening, they are a little bit warmer. So we're seeing anywhere between a degree to up to five degrees warmer. We had the coolest day of the week yesterday. We're just getting warmer all the way into next week. We'll take a look at your complete forecast coming up.